Welcome to Dragonfly 3. In this short orientation video, I'm going to give you a brief description of how Dragonfly is organized so you can get an idea of how to use the software. Be sure to look for other videos on how to accomplish specific tasks so you can become productive very quickly. Let me show you how Dragonfly works and behaves. This is what the user interface will look like often when you're using Dragonfly. You'll notice control panels along the left and the top. These control panels can be expanded and collapsed individually. These control panels allow you to interact with your Dragonfly scene. In the middle of your view is the scene itself. Your scene can have multiple views. For example, if you look at the layout control panel, you see that we're in a two-view layout. On the right side of the screen is a list of all of the scene elements you've built or you are manipulating in your current Dragonfly session. These scene elements might be data sets you've loaded, for example, scans that come from MicroCT or FibSim or other imaging experiments. They might be measurements and annotations you've made. They might be segmentations you've performed, meshes you've created, or other scene elements you've created or derived from existing scene elements. Anytime you click on a particular scene element, so for example, if I click on this uh, ruler called Profile, I'll see its attributes below. You're able to interact with attributes, such as clicking on this for profile intensity, to see how this ruler intersects line intensities on this particular image data set. So what we've reviewed so far is that you have control panels along the left and on the top, you have views into your scene in the middle, and you have a list of all of your scene elements on the right. Your scene element list can become long, and so you have filters at the top. If you want to see only the scene elements that are image data sets, you can click this button. If you want to see only annotations, this button, only regions of interest, or multi-regions of interest, or meshes, etc. You can always see all, or you could do control click to see, for example, images and annotations. The software is highly interactive, and a lot of the elements play together. For example, I have a visual plane showing right now, so you can see where this particular planar view exists in the 3D view. It's interactive, for example, when I change the slice number, you can see how it changes over here on the left view. Likewise, if I change the yaw or the pitch, you can see how exactly what this slice is in the 3D space. Another important feature for orientation is to understand that Dragonfly always puts the user in one state at a time. If you look at the bottom of the screen, it says the current state is now track, which means if I use the left mouse in the 3D view, I can move around in the sample. The different gray buttons you see on the user interface are other state buttons. So if I click on this button, I'll now be in the pan state, as indicated in the status bar indicator below. So you can pan around to look. Likewise, there's a zoom state. There's something called the cine state, which lets you scroll through slices. So the gray buttons are state buttons. The blue buttons are action buttons. They allow you to affect a singular action without changing the state. So for example, if I'm looking in this view and I want to rotate 90 degrees, I can perform that, or I can unrotate backwards the other direction 90 degrees, but I'm still in the cine state. So that's a brief overview of how Dragonfly behaves. You use the control panels along the left and the top to interact with your scene. The view into your scene, which can have multiple views, exists in the middle of the screen, and all of your work shows up in the scene elements list on the right. That concludes this introductory video.